Hi, this is 8-Bit Jeff here, Jeff Fulton from the Into the Vertical Blank podcast, the IntoTheVerticalBlank.com website, and of course this YouTube channel. Today we are doing Stoss tutorial number two, where we're going to use a brute force method to blit sprites, in quotes, to the screen. Now if you go to IntoTheVerticalBlank.com or click on the link below this video, you, you can go directly to the full tutorial is much more detailed than we'll get to into this video, but with just this video, you will be able to type in and see all of the action yourself. So no need to go over and read the full tutorial, but it will give you a lot of background information. You can download all of the code, you can download the extensions and a lot more. So it's a companion, but it also is necessary if you really want to learn everything that's in this tutorial. Okay, so we are going to go through Blitter 2 through Blitter 7 of my tutorials. And let's let's open up, let's get started just by opening up Blitter 2 and we'll take a look at it right now. Okay, so <clears throat> these are no longer really based on the Stosser example by JJ, but I'm using a little bit of his code, so I'm still going to give him props for the next few um, lessons. So we are going to do a simple basic blit to the physics screen. But this time we are going to just take a piece of the screen that is sitting in from our loaded in graphic and we're going to put it to physics. Now, in our first example in Blitter 1, we did the entire screen. So we loaded in a background screen in, into screen 10. And then we blit, we blit in quotes the entire thing to the background. So let's run this and see what we did this time. This time we just did a piece of it. And I have this, if you press the space bar, it will, it will stop that list. And that's where our numbers are line 70 weight key and then default. And so while it's showing up on the screen right now, we are going to wait until a key is pressed and then we are going to uh, break out of the program. Right here on line 60, we are taking 0, 0 to 160, 100, and we are placing it on 80, 50 on the physical screen, and it will display right away. That's all this example does. You can pause this if you want to type in the example from here, and then you can also if you don't have the back1.pi1, which you need, you should go to into the verticalblank.com at the link below, download the tutorial two files, and you'll be able to have that back1.pi1. Even if you don't want the rest of the files, you should probably have that, or you need your own background screen to use. Okay, so let's load in the next sample, which is Blitter 3. Oops, so this one, so let's, so now we're at a place where we have enough code on the, in our, in our program that we can see the limitations of the Stoss editor. We can't, like the Atari 800 or the Commodore 64, we can't scroll up on a screen past where we've, past where our code is. It doesn't work. This isn't like a, a the editor just a little limited. So what we want to do is list... 10 through 100 first and on in Hatari the dash that you'd use for through is actually a slash I'm not sure why so I have to use the numeric keypad to get a dash okay oops list 10 through 100 okay what are we going to do here we are going to use the joystick to move our sprite in quotes around the screen. Now we're not going to be uh, deleting the sprite on every frame, so we're gonna we are going to run into some, oh, we'll say a trail of sprite. We're gonna we're gonna make a worm basically. So let's take a look at some of our code here. What has changed? We have a new line here, line ninety, where we're setting uh, using a variable to set 
the location of where our sprite is going to be uh, blitted to the screen or using the blitter chip drawn on the screen. So we're going to start it at 10 by 10. We also have a new repeat construct. So we're going to do repeat and the companion to repeat is until and we have an until a little bit later. So if you want to type this code in, go ahead and pause it now, type this code in, and then we are going to look at, we're going to list 100 through, I usually do 300. That'll just get us to the end of the program. So there's our repeat again. And now we're going to use the, the joystick. Um, and again, I should mention that up here on line 80, we turn on the, the joystick with the missing link construct. Missing link is P on, but, but to turn the joystick off, it's P stop. So really P on is either inside joke about peeing on somebody, or they just should have made it P stop. In any case, P on is what we're going to use that turns the joystick on. Um, but it also turns off the mouse when you do that. So you have to use P stop to turn off the mouse. So we're going to turn on the joystick in line 80. And then during our, our loop, so we have repeat until P fire one. So until we press the joystick, um, we could have used the mouse or a mouse key, but we can't now because we, uh, we have the joystick in. We can't use your wait key either because we're in a loop. So, here we're going to wait until you press fire on the joystick and then it will end the program. So very simple to check the joystick. If it's you got up, down, left and right, and then you're telling it which joystick you're going to check, zero or one. One is the normal joystick everyone uses on the Atari ST, zero is the mouse port. And then we're going to be using the deck and ink commands or operators in STOS. And these are just going to either increase or decrease SPY and SPX by one, depending on which way you press the joystick. So let's run this and see what it does. Now I have a joystick installed in my, um, in uh, a joystick using the Siegel 7800 plugged into my laptop via USB. So I should have an Atari joystick. This should work with any USB joystick. You just need to make sure that you have gone and checked in joysticks that it is showing the correct joystick here in your setup in Atari. I've seen before where it just said joystick and it didn't work. So if it's not there, you usually have to replug it into your computer and reboot. If you try to plug it in while Atari is running a USB joystick, it may show it here but it won't work. I haven't been, not been able to get it to work. So with this, we have a rectangle on the screen. Why is it a rectangle? Because I messed up. You'll see that later. It should be a square. But right now, if we draw on the screen like this, looks it's pretty good until we go off the side of the screen. Then we get an illegal function call. And why do we get that illegal function call? Well, let's see. We have to type in the word default here. And we're going to list out our program again. So we got our illegal function call at 160. And the reason we got it illegal is SPX or SPY was either greater than the edge of the screen or it was less than zero. And that's what, where you'll get that error. So we are now going to take a look at one further. This is going to be... Uh, we are going to take a, let me take a look here. Let's list this, list 10, list 10 through 100. I hate the dash window there. We're going to look at Blitter 4 now. We, and since our joystick wasn't turned off before, we need to type in P stop. And that'll get our mouse back so we can load in. Blitter 4, 4.BIS. So we're going to list 10 through 100. So Blitter 4, move a blit object on the screen with the joystick, add in boundary checks. So what we've done in this one is almost exactly the same as the last one, but we're adding in some boundary checks. 
You'll notice when we do this that I add in the wrong boundary check, but that gets fixed in Blitter 5. But we'll, I'll show it to you right now so we can see it. Um, list 100 through 300. Now, this dash actually works in Steam. So I used, I was doing this in Steam before. I wanted to move to Atari so everybody could use the same version of the same emulator, everyone on Mac, Linux, and PC. But I did notice the Steam keyboard is set up that if you press the dash, it actually works and shows a dash. That's okay, though. I don't mind having the numeric keyboard. So what we've done here is after we've in increased or de or decremented the value of SPX or SPY based on the joystick press, we're just checking just some very basic rudimentary checks. So if Y is less than zero, then Y equals zero. If Y is greater than 184, and this is the upper left-hand corner of our sprite, so if it's greater than 184, we want to um, make sure that it, uh, oh, if it's greater than 184, we want to make sure it equals 184. And then for X, because right now we're drawing a 16 by 16 sprite, I mean, a, a, our six, it's 32 by 16 because I messed up on this number right here, should be 15. Um, we, we need to actually change this. Um, well, we'll leave it 284, but actually the screen on the ST is three, 320, not 300. So if this was 16 by 16, you would, you actually would want to make this 304. We'll see that in the next one, not to get too um, complicated here. Let's just show how this works. So I'm going to, I'm going to leave this on now so you can see what we did you can add these lines obviously we should renumber here too and in the next example we'll have this all cleaned up um, but we have we have the four checks and then we have to copy using the spx and spy and then if you press fire it will stop and let's run this and we should actually get to the stop this time because if we go up it doesn't break if we go right doesn't break, we go down doesn't break, we go all over the left doesn't break, and then we here we are again. Um, and this draws pretty fast. It's one of the things it's doing is obviously it's, if you see it, it's not a square. It looks kind of like we're playing surround on the Atari 2600. And if we press the joystick button, we've broken out of our program. All right, so list 10 through 100. So that was Butter 4. Now we're going to load in Blitter 5. So this one starts to, starts to amp up what we can actually do. And it fixes a few of the things that we've been working on so far that we were a little uh, sloppy. Not on purpose, but it's a little sloppy here. We're going to fix all those things now. So we'll do a CLS list. Actually, it's better to do it this way. CLS colon list 10 through 100. Oops, you don't want to do a Lissy. CLS list 10 100. Okay. So, Blitter 5. We are now going to add a brute force sprite removal on every frame. So we won't be drawing behind our sprite. And to do that, we've only added one small line to our program. Let's take a look at this. List uh, one zero zero through three hundred. Okay, so what we've done, we have our repeat, and then we have our blit CLS physic. This is going to clear the screen on the beginning of every repeat. So, and we're doing it to the physical screen. And, and if some of you are more knowledgeable of this, you'll be wondering why I'm doing that. And you will see why, and we know it's wrong. We're going to fix that as we go along in our next uh, two examples where we'll have a nice clean blit. This actually will flicker the screen the way we're doing it now. And we're just showing that so people understand why we're doing it. And of course, simple just here's routine spelled wrong. Let's fix that right now. Um, so we have now, we're now changing this our blit copy to be from zero zero to fifteen fifteen. Now, when I first started doing this, I thought the second parameter here's this is this is copying from screen ten, starting at zero zero, 
going to 15 comma 15. I thought it was um, the actual length and width before. So that would be 00416 pixels in each direction. That's not what it is. It actually is 00416 for 15 comma 15, which will be 16 pixels. And the reason we had a a rectangle in the first versions of this was because in the in the versions before this was because on the x coordinate the minute you make this 16 it actually pulls an entire another 16 pixels over to display and copy because that's that's stoss has to do everything on 16 pixel boundaries it can't just copy 17 pixels uh, it has to copy all 16 plus 16. So if we make this 15, it will fix that. We also, because of that, now we can do our boundary check at 304 instead of the um, 290, uh, instead of the, was it 284 we were doing before. So let's just run this and we'll see what happens. See, so there's our sprite. I know this is ugly. This is not the way it's supposed to work. Our sprite moves on the screen a little bit slower than before. Um, there's a reason for that. And uh, 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 it's going slow, but it's also flickering. And if you, if, you caught, if you take a look at the blog post, what's happening with this flicker is we're watching it draw all three bit planes, red, green, and blue, as it updates the screen. We don't want to see that. Nobody wants to see that. Press this, press it. Now, to fix that, we are going to load in blitter six BAS. I still hate that dash. Okay, blitter six. We're going to add in a screen swap, a weight VBL, and a blitter blitter in use check. What does all that mean? That means we have a bunch more code. But it's not that much more in uh, let's take a look and see if there's any new code in 10 to 100 I don't think there is except for these rem statements that have changed this will be the same you can pause now and copy this if you want to let me move the um, you don't have to copy everything but this is going to be the same as our last two examples now let's list from 110 through 300 which we don't even have three lines down to 300 okay so 110 does something new for us. We are now, no longer are we going to be copying pixels directly to the physical screen. That's why we're seeing the flicker. So right now, Sauce has three types of screens. The physical screen, which you see, a logical screen, which is usually the same as the physical screen. But, and the background screen, which is where the sprite, sprites have an extra background so they can make that illusion of sprites going over a complex background without erasing it. It's like a giant sprite mask, but it's the entire background. What we're going to do is we don't need logic for our operations. We want to draw on the background, but we can't screen swap between background and physic. I don't know why that is. Someone knows more about Stoss can tell me that. But what we do is we set logic to equal back. Now, logic doesn't really exist except for as a reference to the background. So now we're drawing on the background when we do, we're going to swap the screens. When we do screen swap, which you don't, it doesn't take any parameters. It will always just swap the physical and the logic screen. Then we'll be swapping actually the background for the physical screen. And we're drawing, doing all of our drawing operations on the background. So let's show, so logic equals back. Here's our repeat. Here's our blit CLS logic. We're clearing the screen. Here's our joystick routine. Here's our, our sprite boundary checking routines. Here is our, again, our 00 to 15 by 15. But well, to 15, 15, 15. Uh, so it's a 16 pixel sprite. And then we have a new command here. If blit busy equals one, then 240. What this does is you do not want to do a screen swap and a weight VBL, which are coming next, if the blitter is running. Because 
if it is still doing something and you break the blitter operation, you could crash the, the emulator or the computer and you'll lose your program. We are not doing enough blitter operations for that to happen, but we want to make sure we instill that now that we always check if blit is busy and we stop there and we wait on every frame until it's done for using the blitter. We, we have to do this. Then on the next one, we do a screen swap. This swaps the, the, the logic screen that's being drawn on because it's a reference to background with physic. And then we wait until the vertical blank before we run our loop again. This times everything to that 50 hertz and smooths out all of the animation. You won't have, it won't run as fast as the, as the single sprite we had running without this check. But if you did that with a bunch of um, items on the screen, it would look haphazard. Plus, uh, at some point, we really want to time everything to be to uh, the 50 hertz screen. It, that way, we could do a lot of other operations later on. Change the palette, things like that. We want to make sure that we are, we are using the, the 50 hertz as a tool. So, let's run this, see what happens. And we're going to show you some other things while we do this that are very interesting. Run. Not runk. Run. Okay, there's our blue screen. Got my joystick in hand. Now, take a look at the bottom of the screen. It says... It's at the bottom of Hatari. There's at the bottom right hand corner. It says BLT and REC. Now BLT is halfway red. That is showing you how much of the blitter is being used right now. As I move it, it doesn't really change too much at all because on every frame is doing two things. It is blitting and clearing out the entire background and then it's redrawing this sprite. So we're using the blitter to do this. So it's not going to take much more. And then as we move, take a look, the blitter is going crazy. Um, but that's what it does. So you can see that you know, the blitter is not necessarily made for doing all this style of animation, but we're going to push it as far as we can. There are other more optimized ways to use a blitter. What we're going to do in the final code listing, which is Blitter 7, is we're going to do this, but instead of showing a black background, we're going to blit it on top of the same image that we're using for our background now. That's just out of convenience. It could be any image, but the, the sprite and the background image need to share the same palette. This makes it easy. So let's press the button here as to not break anything. And let's load in Blitter 7. BAS. I'll show you the changes we've made to this. We're going to list it. We don't have to. So the only change at all we've made to this code, it's line 130. First of all, I'm going to list the first 10 lines in case you want to, in case you want to type all of this in. Because this is one does everything. And this might be the only one you want to type in, just in case. So list 10 through 100. If you want to pause there, this one is called Blitter 7. And this is add in brute force background clear. Really is a brute force background paint and clear, but brute force background paint and clear. Oops, okay. So let's list now from 110. And this was a this was 50. In case you're you pause this and or you're waiting, that's 50. Okay. List 110 through damn dash. Oops. 300. There aren't 300 lines, but um, that we get on a 280. Okay. So what we've done on 130, this is our one big change here. Instead of doing a blitz CLS, we've actually used the background screen, all of 10, as a giant eraser. What it does is it erases the entire screen by blitting the entire thing. This is why it's called brute force. There are more subtle ways of doing this, but we're doing brute force at the moment. By blitting that entire screen back on every frame to clear it so that we are making our sprites look like they're sprites when they're actually just us drawing two things on the screen. So we do that first. All of our same operations are the same as before. Go ahead and pause this and type this code in if you want to or just change out 
line 130 from Brit, blit cls to blit copy 10 comma logic and when we do that we get the magic okay so i moved the we, one other thing I did was move this square starting spot to a different spot so that it wasn't up here. It usually was starting up here. It's it's um, basically gone. Take a look at the bottom left-hand corner where the blitter is going wild down there because we are actually making the blitter do stuff down there. The blitter is going, 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 going. Now, um, we that is all we have for blitter tutorial number two. In the next tutorials, we're going to dig a little deeper into all these operations, and we're going to make them a little more seamless. Starting next time, we're actually going to animate an actual sprite, a character, over a complex background, rather than having to uh, have th this square. The only reason it's a square is because it's the same palette as this background picture that I like so much, but we'll be relieving ourselves of this background picture next time, and we'll have using some of Ari Fleshman's um, Sprite Lib. We're actually going to take them from Mage. He built that for Mage also, and we'll get into that next time. And uh, try to get Ari on the podcast, have him talk a little bit about this too. He is a Atari ST programmer from way back when, also a fantastic artist who made Sprite Lib GPL, if you want to look it up. The S-P-R-I-T-E-L-I-B GPL. It's a great set of sprites for making retro games in, on Windows, but also he did all those sprites for the Atari ST first. So until next time, when we get to tutorial number three, into the vertical blank. Literally, we were just in the vertical blank. Into the Virgo Blank. An 8-Bit Rocket Studios production.